Behold, now she follows the Lamb who was crucified for us, powerful in virginity, modesty her offering, a sacrifice on the altar of chastity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please join me in offering this Mass as a birthday remembrance for Kathy Tagliani. Today the Church honors Saint Agatha, virgin and martyr in the early church in the third century. In her sacrifice, we hear an echo of the readings today that challenge us to be alert to the example of our leaders, the prophets, the apostles, the martyrs, and especially Jesus himself. As they lived their lives, they too faced many sacrifices and many gave their lives. And we too are called to give our all in faith and love of God. And so let us acknowledge the ways we have faithfully walked with him despite the hardships along the way and ask for his mercy and forgiveness of our sins so we may more worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You give pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You nourish and strengthen us in word and in sacrament. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> May the virgin martyr Saint Agatha implore your compassion for us, O Lord, we pray. For she found favor with you, 
by the courage of her martyrdom and the merit of her chastity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect hospitality, for through it some have unknowingly entertained angels. Be mindful of prisoners as if sharing their imprisonment, and of the ill-treated as of yourselves, for you also are in the body. Let marriage be honored among all, and the marriage bed be kept undefiled. For God will judge the immoral and adulterers. Let your life be free from love of money, but be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never forsake you or abandon you. Thus we may say with confidence, The Lord is my helper, and I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge, of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war be waged upon me, even then will I trust. The Lord is my light and my salvation. For he will hide me in his abode in the day of trouble. He will conceal me in the shelter of his tent. He will set me up high upon a rock. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Your presence, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. Do not in anger repel your servant. You are my helper. Cast me not off. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. King Herod heard about Jesus, for his fame had become widespread, and people were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. That is why mighty powers are at work with him, in him. Others were saying, he is Elijah. Still others, he is a prophet like any of the prophets. But when Herod learned of it, he said, it is John whom I beheaded. He has been raised up. Herod was the one who had John arrested and bound in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, whom he had married. John had said to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias harbored a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but was unable to do so. 
Herod feared John, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man, and kept him in custody. When he heard him speak, he was very much perplexed, yet he liked to listen to him. Herodias had an opportunity one day when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers, his military officers, and the leading men of Galilee. His own daughter came in and performed a dance that delighted Herod and his guests. The king said to the girl, ask me whatever you wish and I will grant it to you. He even swore many things to her. I will grant you whatever you ask of me, even to half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? Her mother replied, The head of John the Baptist. The girl hurried back to the king's presence and made her request. I want you to give me at once on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was deeply distressed. But because of his oaths and the guests, he did not wish to break his word to her. So he promptly dispatched an executioner with orders to bring back his head. He went off and beheaded him in the prison. He brought in the head on a platter and gave it to the girl. The girl in turn gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I will grant you whatever you ask of me, even to half my kingdom. Either King Herod was half drunk, or that must have been some dance the daughter did. But he did make that oath. And he cornered himself into doing what he did not want to do. The words of John the Baptist had the vassal king, the client king, Herod, perplexed, yet intrigued. Unfortunately, that's where a lot of people get stuck in their relationship with God, in their relationship especially with Jesus Christ. Puzzled, intrigued, but not sure what to do with this Jesus of Nazareth. And so we keep him at an arm's length, not allowing him into our hearts, into our lives. Jesus, for his part, is teaching us through Mark's Gospel and this portion of the letter to the Hebrews to consider our leaders, to remember our leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Leaders like Herod had a sad outcome where they were not able to allow the faith to, to take root in their hearts, in their lives. But when we consider the outcome of those who allowed faith in, allowed that gift of God's Spirit into their hearts, into their lives. We think of the prophets of old. We think of John the Baptist, particularly today in the Gospel, and the martyrs who followed Jesus in his suffering and death. Mark in a particular way in the gospel that we're focusing on this year helps us to make connections 
in the gospel, in the good news of Jesus, by the way that he sandwiches this story, this painful story about the death of John the Baptist, in between two parts of sending out the disciples. Jesus sent them out in the gospel yesterday. Jesus will receive them back tomorrow. And today's gospel falls right in between those. Today's passage falls right in between those in Mark's gospel. Warning us that if we truly follow Christ, it comes at a high cost, perhaps even our whole lives. But in doing so, we give ourselves to the one who gives us life, who makes our lives worth living, who gives our lives deeper meaning. And so we entrust ourselves to the Lord, whose word speaks powerfully in our lives, whose gift of the sacraments, especially his own body and blood, nourish and strengthen us to persevere like John the Baptist, like St. Agatha, like so many examples of faith in our lives. Not only those who stood in this sanctuary before me, but all of those around us, examples of the life of faith, who have been an encouragement to us. May we see how the faith has blessed their lives and follow in their footsteps with Jesus Christ. Placing our lives in God's hands, we offer our prayers to the faithful. For our Holy Father, our bishops and priests, who speak the word of God to us, that their work may bear fruit, and that they may know of our respect and gratitude for their leadership of faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer like John the Baptist, for their outspoken witness to the truth and God's values of life, holiness, and justice, that they may persevere in their witness to the end, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we who follow Jesus may be filled with love, hospitality, and solidarity with those who are imprisoned and ill-treated and be ever ready to proclaim the gospel of truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the poor, and all who are beset with fear, that through our prayers, the abode and shelter of God's protection and blessing may become real for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Kathy, for whom this Mass is offered, who seek the present Lord's presence in the direct vision of heaven, that they may be purified quickly and admitted to God's banquet of rejoicing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have asked us to pray for them and those intentions we hold in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for leading us in and through your Son, Jesus Christ, and all those who have modeled their lives on Christ. Help us to see in the martyrs and in Christ himself a sign of your strength in the midst of our weakness, giving us the courage to recognize in the shadow of martyrdom the challenges of our lives pale in comparison, and yet you are with us even now. We thank you for hearing these prayers, for we ask them through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for us. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May the offerings we bring in celebration of blessed St. Agatha win your gracious acceptance, O Lord, we pray, just as the struggle of her suffering and passion was pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised for their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance, you give firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Agatha, Saint Martha, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, with the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, especially Kathy, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another some sign of Christ's peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. <coughs> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Lamb who is at the center of the throne will lead them to the springs of the water of life. On behalf of those joining us by video, we pray the prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who bestowed on blessed St. Agatha a crown among the saints for her twofold triumph of virginity and martyrdom, grant, we pray, through the power of this sacrament, that bravely overcoming every evil, we may attain the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Two quick announcements, if I may. The first is a reminder that our collaborative daily Mass has resumed on Saturdays. It will be held at St. Martha Parish Church, 9 a.m. tomorrow morning and each Saturday thereafter. And it will be uh, shown on video, uh, so it will be available to those at home as well. So Saturday, 9 a.m. from St. Martha Church. It happens to be the first Saturday, so it will also be followed by adoration for those who wish to stay and adore Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. But that will not be every week, that's just on the first Saturdays of the month. Second is, I had asked yesterday if anyone might be available to stay after Mass. We only need about two or three volunteers to help stuff a smaller number of envelopes than last time. But I see a show of hands. We've got, all right, we've got four right here, maybe five, so that'll be more than enough. Uh, thank you very much. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.